Today um, I'm going to talk uh, through the SI joint dysfunction corrections. Um, the most common pattern uh, that we see here in the clinic with SI joint dysfunctions is a left posterior anominant and a left upslip anominant. Um, and so we're going to start out by showing the treatment for um, a left posterior with a left upslip, which most of our patients will be. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is what's called a muscle energy technique. Um, I want you to bend your knees there for me. So with the muscle energy technique, there are two ways to do the muscle energy technique. Okay, um, Have a spouse, roommate, friend take one hand and put it on top of the left thigh. The other hand is going to go up under the right knee. You're going to um, push up into your friend's hand and push down with the right knee into their opposite hand. You're going to hold that for five seconds and relax. And you're going to repeat that five times. Four, three, two, one. Relax. Again. And notice that the feet are staying in contact with the table at all times when we're doing this. Two more times there. Four, three, two, and one. And last one. Four, three, two, and one. Good. So that's a, a muscle energy technique that is a, um, a correction activity for a left posterior anominant. Um, the alternative, alternative to that is that if you don't have a roommate or a spouse available, what you can do is um, you can bring your left knee up um, and you're going to push your left knee up into your hand while digging your right heel into the bed. So it's the exact same motion, but instead of using external resistance, you're using your own resistance plus the resistance of the bed or the floor that you're lying on. Um, and again, that would be done um, five times for five second hold. Um, either one of these activities need to be done twice daily along with prior to bedtime, so a total of three times daily. Okay, so that's for uh, that's the self-correction for a left posterior anomaly. The next self-correction is going to be for an upslip, a left upslip. Um, and the way that we're going to correct for an upslip is uh, Allison is going to do a hip sway here. Um, so she's going to going to take her hands, put them on either side of her pelvis, and what she's trying to do is she's trying to sway her hips as high as she can on either side to on the side of the sacrum, just inside the right SI joint there. Okay, so I'm going to have Allison sit up um, and face this direction. And if you'll come around here with the video. And so in trying to find the correct placement area for the dowel, what I find here is that these are the, most, the two most bony prominences on either side back here um, on Allison's bottom. So we have the lumbar spine coming in here and then sacroiliac joints on the left and the right are right up under my thumbs here and those are those two most bony prominences that usually in most people uh, are corresponded with a dimple on either side as well. So if we go just to the inside of those two bony prominences, now we're on the left sacral border and the right sacral border. So what we want to do with that dowel is, in the case of a left sacral rotation, we're going to go just inside the bony prominence there. In the case of the right rotated sacrum, we're going to go just inside the bony prominence there. Okay? So Allison, we're going to call this a left rotated sacrum. Allison's going to lie back on her back. She's going to find that spot with both knees bent. And we're going to lie there for about three to five minutes. Um, again, this should be done twice daily and immediately before bedtime. Um, the order of doing muscle energy technique, sacral rotation correction, and the hip sway or the up slip correction doesn't really matter. Normally here in the clinic we're going to do muscle energy technique and then your hip sway and then your sacral rotation correction, but those can be done in any order. Um, 